That's right. As sweet as this mango is, it is not the sweetest fruit that we grow here on the farm in Thailand. It is sweet, I'll give you that. Now we can't take credit for this one. This reminds me of uh, that film, what was it? Castaway with Tom Hanks and his uh, volleyball, Wilson. Uh, but this was grown by the guy who's got a farm quite near to us. He's got 300 rye and he's got over, well over sort of like 200 mango trees there. And unfortunately for him, He's now selling his mangoes in the local market. He's, bless him, he's just lost his contract for selling all his ripe mangoes to uh, to Bangkok. So now he's, gonna, he's trying to shift a few. And uh, when Toon was round there yesterday at the market, getting something for our dinner with her mum, uh, she spotted him and went over there and, and spotted this Goliathon. So uh, we're going to keep the seed and grow it. It'll probably take about five years to get some fruit on and just when it fruits I dare say the goats will probably eat it but we'll give it a go eh? Right so our sweetest fruit on the farm is hiding behind this. There it is, look at it. How cute's that? Some of you will recognise it. For those of you that don't that is a custard apple or a baby custard apple. If you haven't heard of it by that name you may hear, hear, hear the name uh, sugar apple sour sop and my personal favorite i have to be very careful how i say this uh, bullock's heart bullock's heart yeah these are by far and away a lot lot sweeter than the mangoes i dare say there's there's sweeter mangoes out there that, that we haven't grown yet on the farm uh, but these oh I, I would say three or four times the sweetness of our sweetest mangoes The good thing about this fruit is it, it's quite easy to grow. Uh, these are about four years old. And you might think, well, Lee, you, you, your trees aren't very big for four years old. Uh, they like a hard pruning, I think the phrase is. And I have been improving my pruning technique this year. Uh, I've done a lot of research on it and uh, I've got it down to, I wouldn't say I've got it down to a T. Uh, but the general consensus on the videos that I was watching specifically about these custard apples, now to cut them back, uh, was cut them back hard. Uh, but last year we had an incredible harvest off all the, all the trees. We've got four here currently. Uh, and I didn't want to put all my eggs in one basket and hack them right back. The thing with pruning is, is I went full on Edward Scissorhands on this first one. And I hacked it back to within an inch of its life. And it's it's grown back very, very well. But there's hardly any fruit on it. It did flower, but there's not as many fruits. So I can see one quite nice one up there. I don't know whether the camera will pick that up. Yeah, there's a few there. But there's not as many. The second one along here. I pruned it back not quite so hard. But it was still a lot of, a lot of limbs that came off there. Uh, the second one... Was probably how I've been pruning them since we've had them and then the first one nearer the the road at the front there I just gave that a bit of a trim a, a bit of a short back and sides nothing too drastic uh, and the difference so far has been astonishing well I think so the first one is just laden with them and it gradually uh, drops off the harder they they were pruned now you may well be thinking, well, it's because they're all in a slightly different position. Uh, last year, the two most productive trees were the first two there, which has got the least on now. So the, it, it, to me, it looks like the harder you prune them back, uh, the less productivity you get. Now, it, they may well catch up. It's a long old season for these things. Last year, it, it, I wouldn't say they fruited all year, but... It, it was a good seven or eight months that we were picking fruit off them. It was pretty much non-stop. Uh, and then, you know, th these two down here were less productive, although it was still quite successful in my book. I, I thought that was quite good. I'm just really grateful for sort of bottling it and not hacking them to, to pieces, um, which, which I thought was the way to go when you, when you listen to these experts. So... I don't know, if, if you've got these trees uh, and you've got more than two or three, just give it a go where you, you give it a little bit of a trim and nothing too drastic. I think, you know, it, it, it might pay dividends as it has for us. 
if you haven't got these trees uh, and you'd like to grow them, they grow very, very quickly. I'd have no issues uh, about growing these from seed at all. So, uh, we will be growing more of these and I won't be buying the, the, the small trees. I'm just going to grow them straight, straight from seed. I know there's advantages and disadvantages and you know, and the length of time that you've got to wait if you're going to going to go from seed rather than well quite often they're from graftings aren't they so um yeah but these i'd save yourself some money and just go and buy fruit you get to eat the fruit keep the seeds and just direct sow them where you want them or start them off in a pot and then move them they seem to move quite easily as well yeah check out this fella that'd give you a bit of a belt if you went to pick a fruit and didn't see him around the back uh, the other good thing that I like about these, and it could be to do with the wasps, is not much tends to nosh on the tree itself. You'll see a little bit of bit of damage by by pests, but but not an awful lot. Um, it was worse previously when we were spraying everything, and uh, everything was clear round the bottom of here. Although pest control was pretty pretty much sorted with all the ducks in here we had a lot of compaction and it was just bare soil so any bugs that flew through here or walked through here uh, there was only trees for them to settle on whereas now uh, there's plenty of grass and weeds and all that sort of stuff um yeah so i mean you look at the difference between that and lime tree that's right next to it there's plenty of things that like to eat these and lots of uh what we call it leaf miners as well where they actually get in between the layers of the the fruit leaves so it's it's good it's i wouldn't say it's particularly bug resistant um but yeah it's uh it, it doesn't seem to be in the preference of of a lot of the bugs that we have out here like here this is a guava that we're growing and that there's lots of things that like like nibbling on that so yeah it's easy to grow super tasty if you like fruit that gives you a bit of a kick Wow, um, I'm not sure if it's my number one favourite fruit. It's definitely in my top three. It's fantastic. There's a lot of meat on it as well. You, know, you get a lot of fruit out in Thailand. You don't get a lot of bang for your buck. It's you know it's either all skin or all seed, and um, you know it's, it's a lot of the fruits are pain in the ass to to get into. But these, I, I think they're brilliant. Uh, we tend to pick these a day before they're absolutely perfect. The main reason being that the birds love them as well. And if you're not careful, they'll be they'll be spreading the seeds all over the place and you'll have these growing everywhere. So yeah, we pick them a day before and uh, just leave them outside, uh, out of the direct sunlight. And the next day you'll see, let me just get a, a fruit here for you and I'll uh, explain how you can tell that they're they're ready to eat. Let's go back to the first one. Let's go to the far end of the orchard. Sounds posh, doesn't it, orchard? It's a bit of land with some fruit trees in. Right. How do you tell that they're ready? So we'll take this one. What happens when they're ready? They'll still be this bright green colour. Uh, but all these different segments there, the gap between them will start to open out and you'll see some pink or peachy coloured lines developing uh, and just pick them and say just put them in storage for 24 hours and then the next day you just get get hold of the the uh, the outer skin and you just push it and it all flakes off just by doing that with your thumb and then you're you're left with all the all the tasty segments inside but there is a hard seed in each one so just be careful you don't be breaking your teeth on those but yeah if you get them when they're perfectly ripe uh, the seeds aren't a problem, just, just gob them out somewhere and grow them somewhere else. Custard apples. Bullock's hearts. Give them a go, guys. You won't be disappointed.